Hello, everyone. Uh, so we are going to get started. Thank you for attending our webinar today, um, especially in these very interesting times. And I, I think this topic is particularly Uh, my name is Gina Catanazzo, and I am the Educational Technology Committee, ETC for short, representative for Humber College. The virtual Lunch and Learn webinar series is brought to you by the ETC. The ETC is comprised of members from all 24 colleges in Ontario, Canada. The sharing of ideas, best practices, and teaching and learning uh, strategies related to the use of technologies inside and outside of the classroom is a central characteristic of the committee and the inspiration for the, this webinar series. Uh, in addition to this webinar, we have one left in our series for this term. Uh, to Do visit our website to sign up for that webinar. Um, our next webinar is, is called Accessible Word Documents Made Simple on April 3rd at 11 a.m. Oops. Uh, want to facilitate a webinar? We are now accepting volunteers for the winter 2020 term. Uh, sorry, for the fall 2020 term. Uh, so we are taking a break over the summer. To submit a proposal, visit our website link. I'm going to skip over that because I'm not sure. Uh, okay, and the last but not least, uh, if you want to join our webinar mailing list, stay informed about up upcoming webinars each term, opportunities to facilitate, and information about the Advancing Learning Conference. Uh, visit the link on the screen, and I've also posted all the links in the chat box up at the beginning of the chat thread. So without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce Anastasia, formerly from Mohawk College, now with McMaster University, facilitating a webinar on strategies to boost learner engagement in the synchronous online learning environment. Your turn, Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gina. Um, thank you, everyone, joining the webinar today. I'm so excited to meet or e meet all of you and learn from you today. Um, I would like to share a link to my slides. Please feel free to open it up and follow through the presentation. Let me share my screen with you. Oops. Please let me know if you can see it. Um, unfortunately, I cannot see what's going on in the chat. And Gina is here to help me. So if you have a question, she will be able to ask this question for your behalf. Please feel free to use the chat for your questions. I really would like this to be more of a conversation because all of us have some experience teaching online and using synchronous sessions it would be very nice to learn from each other today so this webinar is not about how to use the tool but how to use your time when using this tool uh, i also would like to share with you uh, a kind of a case study where we all together can come up with some solution for this particular situation and at the end we would have a list of strategies that each of us can use in the class. Um, it will be very difficult to provide specific um, suggestions for each particular case, but I'm sure activities I'm going to be sharing could be adapted for any classroom. So once again, please feel free to stop me anytime if you have a question or if you want to share something and let's get started so just 
everyone is on the same page. By synchronous, uh, we mean classes when instructor and students are present online at specific day and time, either for required or optional session. So it could be a lecture time, office hours, consultations, and so forth. Um, I would like to learn more about you and about your um, experience teaching or using synchronous sessions. Please um, go to Answer Garden. You can see the link on your screen. I'm also going to share this link in a chat. And please answer the question, have you ever used uh, synchronous sessions before? Yes or no? And what uh, did you use it for? Like consultations, lecturing, and so on. Uh, okay. Uh, Mark, you could see the link in the chat. And I'll open it right here. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Let's see, update. Oh, so nice. So I could see that some people used um, synchronous sessions for online classes, team meetings, just meetings, trainings, live discussions, three hour class, wow, office hours. Some didn't have experience. Webinars, online help, interviews for lecture. Wow, a lot of uses. That's amazing. Thank you very much for sharing. And let's go back to my presentation. So I think when we start designing our classes it is it is very important to take into account experiences that students going through as well as an instructors and I would like to share with you my experience maybe not the best um, one a student could student could have um, but we're going to use this as our case um, to think about strategies to help improve this class so once I've been taking a design class, which asks students to come in, in class for synchronous sessions every week for three hours, it was required. And there was also an optional um, session once a week where students could receive their feedback on their assignments which they have to submit every week. Students like myself who were not able to attend those um, optional feedback classes unfortunately never received a single feedback on the assignment. So during um, the live sessions, those three hour sessions, what instructor did is showed us PowerPoints and talked about some theoretical aspects and showed some examples of practical application of all of these um, theories, visual design theories. Um, as a student, I found myself like I was wasting my time because actually this was a blended class. She had some students in class and like myself, 
online at the same time. So all the time instructor interacted with students in class and people who joined online were just left on their own. So I was wondering why do I need to come in class? I could watch this recorded lecture at my own pace. I also could read about all of this series myself and explore examples on my own. So I cannot, and especially when I didn't have a chance to get feedback on my assignments, I felt very disappointed. On top of that, we had a final assignment where it was a group work. It was design pro project. And it was very hard to find your teammates because like the learning community wasn't created and we didn't really know what we can do. Um, so it was very tough. I would like us um, to think about strategies that could improve this class and students' experiences. Let's say the class size is around 15 to 20 learners. Objectives for the synchronous sessions apply key design and human perception principles to data visualization, create a complex data visualization project in a team, use critical evaluation when suggesting project improvements. So it should be synchronous sessions, three hours once a week, and students must come to the class. I would like to share another link with you, Padlet. Please, you can also use or scan this code. Um, and please take your time, like a few minutes to think about how this class could be improved. What suggestions would you give to that instructor? It's quiet. Oh, very nice. Collaboration rooms for smaller breakout groups. Nice. Polling. Good. Divide students into small groups. Group break. Pause a quiz. Nice. How would you divide up a three hour live lecture online? Mm -hmm. Yes. Knowledge checks. Very good. Breakout rooms. Checkpoint understanding. Pause. All very good strategies. Poll questions. Mini synchronous platforms. <laughs> don't allow for group work or don't do it well. 15 to 20 minute sections. Very nice. Yes. Th thank you very much for your suggestions. I do agree with all of them. Personally, what else I would suggest is use um, those synchronous sessions for actually assignment feedbacks because students made their time to come to the session. They agreed upon that. And it would be nice that this time would be spent um, for peer review and stuff like that. <laughs> Hopefully in the future, you'll be able to meet with students in virtual reality. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yes, three hour, not for lecture, but also interaction. Very good. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, it is very important to take into account what students feel when they are in a synchronous, synchronous class as well as an instructors. I sum, summed up um, a couple of perceptions um, regarding this. 
that I would like to share. So it could help us to think about better synchronous session design. So students liked the way the discussions were held. Um, they felt like it gave everyone an opportunity to talk. People express could express their points of view more openly and discussions became more involved. Um, however, some of the students still felt like the discussions didn't go too deep as in an in-person environment. For many students, it was overwhelming. I put this picture on the screen because some of the students felt like it was CNN. So many things at once happening, like PowerPoints, people talking on the mic, and people typing messages. It was very hard to follow all of this um, media. Um, some students appreciated an opportunity to learn in a different way. They loved voting or polling, so to see how everyone else um, in class doing. Some of the students felt a lack of interaction with peers and the instructors, and some really appreciated that uh, these sessions were used for putting, for translating theory into practice each week. As for instructors, um, some struggled to adapt their materials on the fly. Let's say they um, prepared materials for a high-level student or low-level students, and there have been a couple of people in class um, who found these materials easy or difficult, and they were not able to change them on a fly. So they have to just stuck to the script. For instructors, it was also uh, a high cognitive load due to so many things happening, technical problems, as well as keeping an eye on whiteboard, on the chat, and let's say a lecture presentation. Um, they also felt like there have been less interaction between students um, and instructor and students and students. Um, and what they really liked also to do some col collaborative activities um, using, for example, whiteboard. And since um, it wasn't required for students to switch their cameras on. Instructors had very difficult time to understand their re students' reaction to the materials. Are they bored? Do they like it? Are they confused or puzzled? So these are all very good um, perceptions um, we need to know. When we start thinking about um, our learning design. What else do we need to take into account is learning objectives. Like what students, why students need to come to class. Um, it's still a commitment, even they can do it from home, but they still need to find this um, time to join. And what you can do them during the sessions, what they cannot do on their own. That's what we should think about, as well as how big is the class? Is it a small or big? Should you meet with students every week and for how long? Is it required or optional session? If it's op op optional session, you may not be able to use all of the activities you planned. So people who are not able to attend um, do not feel like they are not included, as well as you need to think about uh, tool features uh, and what features do you need for your class. Let's say if your tool doesn't provide uh, a polling um, feature, a whiteboard feature, and you really need, need it for the class, you may want to find an additional tool. Um, any questions so far? Anastasia, so far, no, but um, maybe someone wants to come on the mic and ask a question. Yeah. Okay, 
So based on the research, there are the following things students want to do during synchronous sessions. They want to discuss, they want to debate, and they want to clarify. And let's talk about some activities you can do um, in order to keep students engaged. For example, for the discussion, you can provide uh, more examples and insights. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, you might want to um, provide some case studies or some novel content or invite a guest speaker and again make it more of a discussion rather than one way conversation. You may want to ask your speaker to share a story or and at the same time ask your students to share um, and ask questions. As someone already mentioned, it would be nice if it's a longer um, discussion or um, one way conversation to uh, mix um, presentation with some polls. And you could use poll everywhere and Menti tools in order to do that. Um, for debate, uh, as you know, debates are a great tool for engaging students and leaving up classes. Um, among other skills, debates can foster abstract thinking, public speaking research, and teamwork. Um, so what you want to do, like every week, uh, one student should um, share research findings in the subject area that they find surprising, unexpected, or life-changing. Um, they can present this research during your synchronous session or upload the video on a flip grip. It's a video discussion platform. Um, there will be a link in my presentation to that, so you can explore if you don't know. And during the live session, you may want to split students into two groups, like pros and cons, um, so they can discuss those research findings and come up with a list of uh, implications for their life. Uh, I've noticed that for some um, professors or instructors, uh, sessions are optional. So that's where you can offer your consultations, office hours, or Q&A sessions. You may want to still ask students to come to these sessions with challenging dilemmas or problems and questions. Uh, or just during the week, you can sum up all of the questions that come your way. And uh, during the synchronous session, you may just want to answer all of these questions or use this as a check-in point to tease out the most difficult materials for students and expand that particular topic. Or uh, if there is a big assignment for the class, you may want to help students to brainstorm ideas for the assignment or provide feedback on the assignment draft. Students also want to interact, collaborate, and contribute during synchronous session and strategies that work very well. Um, was speed dating. Um, for example, if you need to teach different concepts of, let's say, different research methods, or like in my case, different tools that you can use for in your synchronous classes, um, you may want um, to create and share an Excel sheet with all of these research methods on, and tools to let students pick one. And during synchronous session, uh, you can again divide them into groups and let each student a minute or three minutes to present this um, concept and shift them around um, until everyone heard about every single tool or research method. Um, another strategy is illustrate textbook example. So again, before the synchronous session, you may want to ask students to go on a field trip 
and take photos so that will show how theory or approach they read about works in real life settings. And during the class, um, you may want to put students in the breakdown room to share those photos, compare results, and draw a conclusion. For example, pictures of marketing tricks, or price tags to analyze how prices on the same product differ from store to store in different cities, states, or countries. Um, if you have international students, you may want to check Harvard Business Publishing website. As an instructor, you can get a free account. Unfortunately, if you want to, uh, oops, sorry, too early. <laughs> Um, another thing that students love to do is games and simulations. Um, for some reason, we all know what to do with students when it comes to face-to-face -to -face classes. But with the touch activity, uh, I'm sure uh, any face-to-face -face activity can be translated into synchronous one. So, one of those activities are games and simulations. It could be a real board game. If you provide students with um, some, um, uh, what it's called, handouts, they have to print before. Um, let's say if you teach a foreign language and the topic is numbers, you can play bingo, for example. Or it could be different simulations. You can find them online and for free. And that's um, where Harvard Business Publishing could help. Um, as I mentioned before, it's free for instructors. But if you want to use the simulations with students, students must pay for it. But I still recommend um, to check it out. Because as professionals in the field, we all have lots of samples and case studies. But sometimes we just don't know how to use them, what methodology to use to present them and make it, them look like an activity. And I think um, that website would give a very good idea how to do that. There is also a website called Merlot. Um, they do offer lots of simulations and case studies for free. And of course, all of you know Kahoot. Um, it's a very easy app to create, um, I would say, gamification experiences for students with leadership boards um, and more of a quiz type thing. OK, for collaboration activities, students love to solve problems. Um, let's say if you teach a web course, um, you may want to ask students to modify the code for example, or create a code. Or um, another effective um, strategy is creating mind maps. Uh, they are very beneficial and help students to brainstorm and explore ideas, um, as well as facilitate understanding of relationships between concepts and principles make easy to communicate ideas as well as help with recall. And um, I would like to show you this tool because I don't think it's very known, but it's a good one, uh, which is called Mindoma. What's good about this tool is that it can be embedded into LMS and it looks like um, a Padlet or a wall where students can work together all at the same time and create that mind map. They could add some audio, some video, some pictures. Um, I know some use this tool successfully for um, creating a mind map of the readings. There might be any other good uses for that in your discipline. Anastasia, Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. Is mind, ma mind 
Mindomo free? Uh, it does offer a free option, uh, basic one, but it's not very expensive. Like it's $180 for um, two instructors and 80 students. Um, license is not very expensive, $180 a year. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thank you. But it does offer free, some free functionality to try it out. Um, yeah, it's very nice. If you use lots of mind mapping or concept mapping, it's going to be something you want to try. And um, as well as if you use a lot of timelines, uh, you may want to ask students to create one. And there is a nice app um, for that. All you need is just to create a template in Excel file and share it with your students. And they all together can work on it at the same time. And the final product looks stunning. So that's how it looks like. It could be some text on top. Um, they could add some pictures. Some maps. Um, again, video file. And you could also see the events on the timeline. It's a free tool for now. I'm not sure if it could be embedded into LMS. So, but with Excel file, I think it would be easier. This company also offers some other products like for storytelling. You may want to explore them at your own pace. Do you have any questions so far? And finally, activities you can use for contribute. Um, in my particular class, design class, <laughs> I really missed uh, an opportunity to receive feedback on my assignments. So you can use your synchronous session for peer reviews or feedback. Um, also, students can work on wikis or annotation. I would like to show you another um, app, which is called Hypothesis. It's um, also free. Let's say you just need to upload your text. Let's say if you have a difficult article, um, students need to read, and sometimes it's very hard to understand um, what author meant on your own. So sometimes it's helpful to read it with someone else. So you can use this app, uh, upload your article or web text on your LMS. All you need, students need to select the text, um, add some notes. You can work in a group. Let's say, I don't understand this particular piece. What do you think about it? Um, they can collaborate and search the notes at the end. As I said, it could be embedded into elements and it's free, which is great. Any questions? I would like us to go back to our Padlet, maybe, or just here. 
if you could share other strategies that you find successful, please feel free to jump in. Oh, I see that Nicole mentioned Simple Mind app here. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, someone used mind map to plan master's degree thesis. That is great. <laughs> Let's see if there are any other suggestions here. Oh, that's very nice of Rob to offer uh, services in virtual reality. Wow. Um, someone asked a question, how you can have one online group work? OK, uh, I think almost every tool for synchronous or web conferences now offer breakout rooms. Um, so you can just uh, split students into those groups and provide them a platform. Uh, it could be like depends on the activity you're doing, like mind mapping, mind mapping. You can provide the link to Mindomo or if it's reading. Uh, whatever. Uh, so you split them in a group, give them platform, give them a problem to solve. And that's basically it. I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, use the draw tool and let students scribble and contribute. Yes. That's a good strategy. It's not silly. Questions about previously covered material and drill down into that in more detail here. Very nice. Yeah, for polling function, uh, you may want to use Answer Garden, the one that we used uh, in the beginning, or Menti. It does offer free um, basic functions, but it could be enough for your needs. Okay. So I wonder if anyone wants to speak up and share their experiences teaching online or being in online in synchronous sessions. Yep. I could hear someone is trying to ask a question or share an experience. That would be very nice to hear. Yeah, can and you repeat that question again? Oh, sure. Um, so it would be very interesting to learn about your experiences, either being an instructor in a synchronous session or a student. So what's your perceptions? And I've just shared the link to uh, my presentation again. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say hi to everyone. I just finished my first teaching of three hours this morning. And thanks to the Center of Teaching and Learning, they showed me so much options on Blackboard Collaborate, and it helped so much. So these kind of sessions really, really helped a lot. And the students said afterwards it was such a good vibe. So mm -hmm. it was really fantastic. So thanks so much for supporting it. That's great, Dylan. I'm happy you had a very good and positive experience as well as your students. That's important, especially when you just started. It's very encouraging. Does anyone have any bad experiences? <laughs> the students are Hello? Work online. Hi. Yeah. Um my name is Shelvin and Dylan. Uh, this is a question for Dylan. Dylan, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Like, what was the setting and how did it work? Yeah, so uh, this class was a pre-apprentice, the Arborist program. So it's pretty amazing because they were just signed up a few weeks ago. And of course, mm -hmm. everything what happened, and we moved everything online. So actually, they're doing their orientation online. They're doing their classes online. So it's all, and they're coming back to college for the first time online. So it's a pretty amazing experience. And we, we used WebEx audio call for the orientation. Okay. And then, and then we moved them to Blackboard to kind of access Blackboard Collaborate. And I'm teaching digital skills, so I was able to take them through the discussion board on Blackboard and the chat functions. I broke them up for case studies this morning on uh, if an arborist something goes wrong, and I broke them up about the technology that they would use during the process. Uh, so the rooms worked really well. The I asked them about the chat box. That worked well. And also I had the little polls. So I asked them little polls like, what's an ideal size for your group for a discussion? And they said about four to five people, which I put mm -hmm. some of the room too many people in. So that's some of it what's happening so far. And it was just three hours this morning, and they wanted about two 10 minute breaks every hour. So I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a Tesla class last night, 6 30 to 9 30, and I almost died. I gave up after nine o'clock because we only had one break, and I was just so burnt out. Uh, but so mm -hmm. they, I think breaks are really important. Oh, no yeah. wonder. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It was explained very well. And I think I will also try uh, doing something like that in future. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. <laughs> so um, a couple of last suggestions. If you want to explore more, please uh, Google this uh, book. 144 tips on synchronous e-learning for more ideas and inspiration. Uh, it would be nice to stay in touch either through my Twitter account or through my email. Um, I think I would like quickly um, maybe sum up. Um, Please um, consider getting a headset or external mics or headphones so the quality of your audio um, is good. Allow students to chit chat in the breakout rooms before class starts. So when we have a face to face class, that's what usually students do. They chit chat and enjoy those small talks. Do the same um, in a synchronous session. Uh, ask students to mute themselves and switch cameras on so you could read their facial expressions and see if they're um, confused or puzzled with anything or enjoy your class. Uh, as Dylan mentioned, he taught a very long class and students wanted to have breaks, so please allow a 10-minute break if you need to teach for a long time. Um, Please consider asking your students to do some readings, research, 
um, before the session so you could actually do things during the session and activities. Um, also, what is helpful is to prepare worksheets and handouts. Um, provide some sort of structure on your LMS and embed tools if possible. So the structure helps students to um, manage their time and um, commitment. So they know exactly what they need to do online uh, or asynchronously or synchronously. And finally, consider recording your sessions so students who were not able to attend still would have a chance to take a look um, at them. So once again, thank you very much for um, joining the session. I was really happy to learn from all of you. I would like to thank my colleagues from Maha College, Brian Gold, uh, for motivation, and from McMaster University, Lavinia, Dan, Joanne, uh, and Liam for inspiration. So thank you very much. Anastasia, can you um, display the slide with the book again? Paul is asking for that. Oh, sure. Maybe I can share the PDF here. Yeah, when I Googled it, um, uh, it's the first result that comes up, but I can't seem to share the link. It just downloads yeah. the link right away. Yeah, the I had the same issue, so mm -hmm. that's why I already downloaded it. Where is it? Maybe this one. Oh. Where am I sharing? Uh, I don't know why it takes forever. I think just my connection is so bad. I, I, if you share, um, if you share the PDF here, people won't be able to download it anyway. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All they could do is just to type this name, title. Yeah, if you Google 144 tips, I, I put it way up somewhere, 144 tips on synchronous learning, it's the first search result that comes up. Yeah. And it's by the eLearning Guild. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Marcello. That's oh, wow. Cool. I wasn't able to copy it. I don't know how you did it. Me <laughs> <Maybe>. either. <laughs> I struggled enough. 
I'm not using a mouse right now. It's my fingers and it's just clunky. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I'm going to copy it too. <laughs> So Anastasia, do you see the, because I, on my screen, when I, I click on the uh, hamburger icon, oh. it says start recording. So I'm guessing, but you're seeing it's recording? Uh, yes. So are you able to shut it off? Because I can't. Let me try. 